Good day, good day, and welcome to Africa Teen Geek. Geeks, this is a STEM digital school. If you have just joined in, you are here for grade 12 physical sciences. Okay, this is a grade 12 physical sciences class. Today is the 8th of July 2020, and I hope that you guys are ready to do some physical exercises and continue with the chapter summary that we've been doing. We started yesterday doing mechanics um, unit three, which was the chapter summary. Remember, it's the work, energy, and power. We started doing um, yesterday. We first went through the summary of the theory of all the stuff that we did. And then therefore we started to do problems. And I did mention that today we would continue with the revision problems. So that once we're done with work, energy, and power, and you understand everything, we can move on to the next chapter. Yes, guys, this is term three of 2020. We are doing term three work. So if you are a bit confused, you must just know that um, some of the stuff from term two have been moved to term three. And that's why we are doing it now. And I hope that it's really um, helpful to all of you. Okay. So today we're continuing with revision for work, energy, and power. Um, the textbook that I'm using for this revision work. I am using the study and master because it's got quite a lot of problems that we can work with and you know try and solve together, okay? Reminding you again that I'm working from the study and master textbook today, which you guys can get on Snaplified. Snaplified is an application where you can download any textbook that you can think of be it physical science, maths, um, English, all the subjects, it's got all the subjects. So if you um, think that uh, you'd like to take on some more textbook, you can just go and download Snaplify. And remember that Snaplify is absolutely free. Once you download it and you download your books, you can view them offline, you can view them online, it doesn't matter. We'll be able to have access to them. You can even have it on your phone. I have some of the textbooks on my phone. So it's a very helpful application and it's going to be free until the 31st of December due to the coronavirus problems and issues that happened uh, prior to the year. And they have made this, they've, they've made this for us absolutely free, okay? So you guys can get it. Guys, this is my trick um, soon. I also wanna remind you guys that we're gonna be doing some prelim assessments. So um, slowly, you need to slowly get to the point where um, you understand most of the work because the prelim prep is going to prep you guys so that when you guys do start your prelims, things become much easier for you guys and you are more understanding, number one. Number two, you know how to work fast and effectively because remember, time is most important when you're writing an exam. And once you get used to writing exams or tests in a specific time, uh, it becomes a norm because once when you're writing your exams and you're busy panicking about time, you sometimes cannot think of what you are writing. And sometimes you write, 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 only to find that your time is up, but you're not done writing. So that's why we do these assessments for you guys just to, you know, get back into that mode of writing tests, writing exams, writing at a certain time, etc. Okay. So we're going to be doing that soon enough. And we will be doing the prelim paper. Okay. So I hope that we are all together here. This is the STEM Digital School. My name is Nongkuri Legomad Dondo. I am your physical sciences grade 12 teacher. Here's my picture right there. <clears throat> I am the physical sciences grade 12 teacher. So we've already spoken about these quantities. Um, just reminding you guys from yesterday, that V is for velocity and it's in meters per second. F is for force. We usually write it in Newton. And energy is in joules or kilogram per meter square. You know, um, it's this long thing. <laughs> but you just, you guys have. To know it okay but it might be given to you guys on your formula sheet and then you have the work 
work is going to be neutral perimeter or joule. So these ones are all joules, all your energy, work, potential energy, kinetic energy. energy, mechanical energy, all of this is in joule. And then for power, power, we have it in watt, okay? Then moving on, these are the formulas that we use in work energy and power. We've got the work formula there, which is equals to force times distance times the angle, okay? So if the angle, if there's no angle, then you assume that it's cos zero and that will give you a one, okay? And if it's if it's a opposing force, then you know it has to be 180 degrees because it's 180 degrees out of phase and that will give you a minus one, which means that your work done in the opposite direction will be a minus. Then we've got kinetic energy, we've got potential energy, which is MGH, we've got the work, the network, which is a change in kinetic energy. Um, then we've got the power, which is work over time. So in power, most important thing that you need to do is to understand what kind of work, how your work, what what work is being done in your equation. And once you have that work, you just divide it by the change in time, and you have your answer. So sometimes they can ask you for the time and give you the power. So you also have to know how to manipulate your equations. But power can also be, if it's at constant, if, if, if it's at constant speed, then your time is equals to force times velocity, okay? And work conservative is minus triangle P. These things are important because they tend to write them in your question that um, a potential energy or they write that Work none, this is basically according to the gravitational potential energy. And this one, work none conservative, it will always be work that is done, for example, when there's friction, etc. So it usually involves friction. Okay? I'll be good. So we're starting from number three. We've already done number one and number two. So it says here. Which which of the following choose the correct answer? Okay. It says which of the following is the unit for power? Okay. So if you're looking at this, is it number one, joules, Newton per meter second minus one? Or the last one. So it's it's D, right? Because um, power is in what? So what in this case is W. Okay. So number B says which of the following? Which of the following forces is an example of conservative force? Remember this, it talks about, it only depends on the start and the finish, okay? So here it would be weight, because remember, gravitational potential energy, which is roughly weight, is, is what we'd be calculating here. So this one would be number C, okay? Oh, sorry, on number one, it says, which one of the following is not a unit for power, okay? And that would be the C. The C is not a unit for power at all, okay? So here, it's going to be C again, because it's going to be the weight. And then, on number C, it says, for an object falling freely near the surface of the Earth, Momentum and mechanic energy is conserved. Mechanical energy is conserved, but me momentum is not. Momentum is conserved, but mechanical is not. Or neither, neither momentum or energy is conserved. So what is the answer there for number C? It's number C, right? 
So the answer to number C an object falling freely near the cell, right? It would be B, which says that mechanical energy is conserved, but momentum is not conserved, okay? Because it's falling freely near the Earth's surface. So it's a free fall, okay? So moving on to number D, it says, if the mechanical energy of a free-falling object is conserved, then we can conclude if a mechanical energy of a free-falling body is conserved, then we can conclude that the sum of the potential and kinetic energy at a point in motion is zero, that the potential energy is equals to kinetic energy at any point in the motion. C, the body experiences no air friction as it falls through the air. Or number D, the work done by Earth on the body is zero throughout the fall. I think the correct one is number C. The body experiences no friction as it falls through the air, okay? So that's what it would mean if we said if mechanical energy of a free-falling body is conserved. But if, if it was non-conserved, it would have air friction. Okay. Then moving on. On number E, it says when an object is tra traveling at a constant velocity on a horizontal surface, the equation P is equals to force times velocity can be used, right? They've already told us about this one. That um, when, when an object is traveling at a constant velocity, your P will not be your work time changing time. It will be your force time velocity. So here, the force refers to the force reserved to A, the net force acting on the body. Like, you know, on your force diagrams, you have an object and you have all the forces acting on a body. B, the external forces applied, the external force applied to the body. So which means, um, if it's at constant, they want to know the external force that applies to the body or the normal force acting on the body or the gravitational force acting on the body. The correct one is the number B, which is the external force applied to the body. Okay. So that's what our P equals P F V. This F, what this F means. This refers to the external force applied to the body. Okay. Then now we move on. It says here on number four, on number four, it says, at a building site, Sifiso throws a brick to Kanya. To Kaya, okay? So there's Fiso there, and there's Kaya here, who is standing on the roof. Oh, Sifiso is this one, and Kaya is this one. So he throws a brick to the roof. So Sifiso throws the brick from 1.5 meters above the ground, okay? Kaya allows the brick to pass him, and then catches them while they are falling downwards, four meters above the ground, okay? Ignore the air resistance, okay? So what they're asking here is, if Kaya catches the brick that has fallen, that has a speed of two meters per second, use energy conservation principle to calculate number one, the speed at which Sviso throws the brick, and number two, maximum weight above the roof, uh, maximum height above the roof reached by the brick, okay? And then on B it says, explain why it is advisable for Kaya to allow the brick to pass him and catch it as it returns down, okay? Because we need to write this down, I can just go straight to the answer. And in this case, it says that since the only force acting on the brick 
while it is in motion is gravitational force mechanical energy is conserved okay so what what is the formula for conserved for for conservative energy mechanical energy conserved i think our ek is going to be so here is going to be ep at the top this is mechanical energy bottom is equals to mechanical energy top okay so what does this mean it will mean that mgh mgh plus half mv squared at the bottom will give you the mgh plus half mv squared at the top so we've grouped them accordingly right now we've um, disarmed the equation so what we don't have we don't have the mass for all of them and we do not have the velocity okay but we do have the velocity for the top okay because when it goes to the top it's still on two meters per second okay so now we've got two and so what we can do because all of these ones they have mass this one has mass this one has mass this one has mass and this one also has mass it means that we can divide everything by mass to get rid of the m okay so we've divided the mass and we left with the velocity and the which is the velocity at the bottom and from there we can make it the subject of the formula meaning we can take all of this and minus it this side and we're going to divide all of that by a half which is basically times it by two and that will give us 7.28 meters per second negative one so that's our velocity at the bottom okay i hope we're good to go therefore smooth fiso through the brick at 7.28 meters per second okay then now moving on to number two number two they wanted to know um the maximum height so what they wanted to know is this height here above the roof reached by the brick okay they find it, they want to know this height here so from here to here that's the maximum height so once again we're going to have our mechanical energy which is um mechanical energy at the bottom is equals to the mechanical energy at the top and then you're going to disarm the equations your potential energy and your kinetic energy formulas just like they did here and once again you'll have all the m's right but you must remember that at maximum height your velocity is zero why is it zero because at maximum height it stops and then it falls down okay so because of that pause that happens there you're going to have a velocity of zero okay and then oh this is at maximum height it's no longer just at the top it's maximum height and then our h will be the subject formula that we're looking for okay here we already have our height at the bottom which is 1.5 so we divide everything by the mass and what we get for our height is going to be 4.2 it's not so difficult is it it's not difficult we just need to understand what is going on in each problem so these problems they are all problems that you know they just require a lot of practice so if you do a lot of practice you will be able to understand how to solve most of these problems so therefore this is the maximum height but they want to know how much above the roof you know is the height so therefore the height above the roof is going to be 4.2 minus 4 and that's going to be 0 0.2 meters so it means that this is 0 0.2 meters above the roof make sure guys don't forget that part it's they made it clear that they want to know the height above the roof 
not the entire roof, not the entire height, because this H is for from the bottom until maximum. But we are looking for the height above the roof, okay? Moving on to the next one. It says uh, on number B, explain why it's advisable for Kaya to allow the brick to pass him and catch it as it returns down, okay? It's advisable for Kaya to catch the brick on its return down is because the time taken from the, for, for the brick to reach him will be much greater, allowing him more time to react while the speed of the brick will be the same at the point where it is caught, okay? Then we move on to number five. It says a 0 0.04 kilogram brick slides on a curved wire starting from wrist. at point A, which is right here. The path from point A to point B is frictionless, whilst the path, the path from B to C is rough, okay? So this one is A, this part here is frictionless, and this one has friction, okay? So what they wanna know is find the speed of the bread at point, B. Okay. We we'll look for the bread at point B. And B, if the bread arrives at point C with a speed of one meters per second, determine the work done by the frictional force in passing from B to C. Okay, since the surface from A to B is frictionless by the conservation of energy. The mechanical energy, we have EP is equals to, I mean, E mechanical is equals to E mechanical energy once again. So I think now we're slowly starting to see like how you, you get your equations right, okay? So, um, where is it? It's right here. So we know that at point A, when it starts, so this one is point A, this is point B. At point A, our kinetic energy will be zero because it's not moving it. It's just starting to move, okay? So our kinetic energy will be zero and we have our MGH. And at the bottom, at the bottom, there is no longer gravitational force. So our E potential is also zero. So we're gonna have MGH is equals to half MV squared. Okay, then we write it down as followed. And which means our velocity, which is gonna be the subject of the formula, is gonna be 3.96 meters per second. Okay, I know guys, doing revision is a lot of work and it can sometimes be boring, but it's important because this is stuff that you need need to be prepared your prelims are coming up you need to be prepared okay so going to number b it says that if the bread arrives at point c with a speed of one meters per second determine the amount of work done by the frictional force in passing b and c okay so for b for the motion from b to c the only non-conservative force acting on the bread is the frictional force and therefore Work non conservative, you know, it's equals to change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy. So, um, the change in potential energy at C is minus the, the change, the, the, the energy potential at B plus energy kinetic at C minus energy kinetic at B. So, basically, what they've done, they've disarmed this triangle and EP, who is it? usually is is going to be ep ep plus uh, it's going to be ep ek minus ep oh changing ep is going to be ep at c minus ep at b and then changing ek is going to be ek at c minus 
E K at B. And then now you're going to disarm all of them and show their formulas. And you should have everything because the mass is given. And what we are looking for is the work done. So we have everything that we need here. And we just calculate straight the work that is done here. Okay. Yeah, I know it gets tricky and difficult, but I hope that you guys understand. And then now we move on to number six. Number six says that two learners, Bongi and Sam, each carry a crate of the same mass of ground floor of a building to a second floor. Bongi takes 30 seconds while Sam takes 60 seconds to deliver their crate. Compare the work done by the crates by each learner. Explain your answer. And number B, compare the power of each learner. Okay? So for B, it says, from the motion from B to C, Oh no, we are doing number six now. So it says, assuming that each learner moves upwards at a constant speed and ignoring the friction, work is done on the crates by applied force, which is non-conservative force in each case. So work done conservative is gonna be change in P plus change in EK, and that's gonna be MGH plus zero equals to MGH again. So since the crates have the same mass and gain the same height, the work done in each case is the same, okay? And then for the power, the power is equals to work divided by change in time. So this is proportional to the time. So the time, Sam's time, change in time is greater than the change in time for Bongi. Therefore, the power, Bongi, will have a greater power than Sam. Okay? You guys understand what it means? Is that um, the power is inversely proportional to the change in time. So if, 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 if one's time, if Sam's time is greater than Bongi's, it means that Bongi is going to have a greater power than Sam, okay? So you guys see, understand what that means. Because here they ask, um, here they ask, compare the power of each learner. So Bongi's time is much less than Sam's time. So if it's inversely proportional to the power, it means that whoever has less time will have more power. And that is what is depicted on this problem, okay? So now we move on to number seven. Number seven says, a car is traveling on a horizontal road at a constant speed of 100 kilometers per hour. If the power delivered by the engine is 20 kilowatt, what is the magnitude of the frictional force opposing the motion of the car? What is the magnitude of the frictional force opposing the motion of the car? Okay, so here we're working with our forces. The car is traveling horizontal road at a constant speed of 100 kilometers per hour. If the power delivered is 20 kilowatts, what is the magnitude of the frictional force? Okay. Okay, so here they say the force is the force applied by the engine to overcome friction, right? So velocity, we have it. Remember, if it's at constant speed, we know that power is equals to force times velocity. But in this case, we are looking for the force and we've been given power. Power is 20 kilowatt, right? And velocity is 27.28 meters per second. Guys, do not forget to convert. If you forget to convert, your answer is so going to be wrong. 
So if it's 100 kilometers, it's 100 divided by 60 to 22 minutes and you divide it by 60 again to 22 seconds because it's moving from hour. If it was just meters, kilometers per meter, it would just be 160. But because um, we also have to convert it to seconds again, then it becomes 60 times 60. Okay? So the force here in is 720 Newton. So therefore, the magnitude of the frictional force is 217. It's 720 Newton. Okay. I hope you all understand and got it right. So, uh, let's just do these couple of ones before we close. It says on number eight, a high thousand kilogram elevator is moving upwards at a constant speed of three meters per second. If the elevator has one passenger of the mass of 50 kilogram and a constant frictional force of 2000 Newton opposes the motion of the elevator, what power is delivered by the motor to lift the elevator? Okay. And number eight says the force by the motor on the elevator must be balanced, must balance the weight and frictional force downwards. So since the net acceleration of the lift is zero, which means the velocity is constant. So the force applied is equal to mg plus friction. And that is what you get, you get 12,290. So we continue. Now we're looking for the power. The power is gonna be force times velocity. Okay, so the force applied is mg plus the force of the friction. So that's going to be 12,290. And then for the power, we're going to have force applied times velocity, and that will give us 12,290 times 3 meters per second, which is what was given to us. And this will be our answer going to be 36,870 joules per second minus one, or you can say watt, or you can have 36.87 kilowatt, okay? So that is the problem for today. I think these are enough problems. You can continue doing 9 and 10 if you have time, because it's 9, 10, and 11. But I think that for now, this is enough, enough, enough. So let me just see if I can give you guys some more homework to do. Okay, so it tends to happen. Okay, let me just see if there's something that I can give you guys to be able to do for tomorrow so that you don't sit at home and have nothing to do. Okay, we're just going to have, oh, no, 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 this is the wrong book. Okay, so I just want to see just a last minute testing for you guys. I know these problems are, you know, they're very broad. I like them because they touch on all the different ways on questions and how they can be asked in any test or exam. So if you're able to solve all these problems that we've just done on your own without getting any help, it means that you are ready to go write your exam, okay? So here we are. So this 
is our number nine, okay? 10 and 11. So I think um, you guys can do that one for homework, okay? You guys can do that for homework. And before we start our new chapter tomorrow, then you'll start with these three problems. I don't want to bombard your minds with a lot of work. So, because we've done quite a lot of problems today. So 9, 10, and 11, we will do them tomorrow before first of our class. And then you're going to start with our new chapter. Okay? Thank you guys so much. We've taken all the pictures. I hope you've taken all the pictures. And... taking all the pictures and we will do the problems. And if you do have your uh, study and master textbook, then you're not gonna have a problem, okay? You will not have a problem. But for me for today, I am your physical sciences grade 12 teacher. Thank you guys so much for a beautiful class. And you can catch me if you have any other queries, you can email me on t33t at gmail.com and I'll try my best my bestest to answer it right and this is Africa Teen Geeks STEM Digital School and goodbye.